Hello, hello everyone, Dr. Jason Silva here, and today we're going to be discussing inferential statistics and data analysis in Excel. Now that you've downloaded the data analysis function, we're going to run a few tests. In particular, we're going to focus on the t-test and the regression analysis. We know that when we're considering the level of measurement, a t-test requires a dependent variable that is a ratio interval variable and an independent variable that is nominal. And it must be binary, meaning it only has two attributes to the variable. For example, yes, no. For regression analysis, we need to have a dependent variable and an independent variable that is ratio interval. So let's get started. We hear a lot in the news media about how certain forms of rifles are generating more fatalities during mass shooting attacks. So let's take into consideration whether or not a rifle is incurring more fatalities during mass shootings. Now, we could do a simple comparison by considering rifles against fatalities. For instance, if we sort the data, and we know how to do this by going into our data sort option, we can simply compare the means. So if we look at rifle means by attack fatalities, we see at the bottom that there are 13.5 average fatalities when an incident involves a rifle. And going over here, we can see incidents that don't involve rifles involve 6.87 average number of fatalities. So this gives us a good inference that rifles are going to statistically significantly produce more fatalities. However, with data analysis, we can use the t-test to determine if this is statistically significant. In order to conduct a t-test, we need to go to the data analysis function. And you're going to come across a few different types of t-tests. For this introductory course, it's simple to use the two sample assuming equal variances t-test. We're going to click OK. And now we see two options. For the first variable range, we're going to want to focus on fatalities that involved a rifle. So we'll want to make sure that we have our rifle variable sorted according to whether or not it involves a rifle. And then we're going to want to click on attack fatalities. For the first variable range, we see it says I33, referring to the cell number. And we're gonna scroll down, hitting shift to make sure that we include all of the cells that we're interested in. For variable two, we're going to take into consideration incidents that did not involve a rifle. So we see here, this would be I32 all the way to I2, hitting shift. Now, we did not include the labels in this example, so we don't need to click labels. However, if you accidentally click the label, you can just hit this little check mark here, and this will make sure that that's not included in the analysis. We may want to create a new name for our worksheet because a new worksheet is going to pop up at the bottom. So we'll call this one T-Test. And then we're going to click OK. Now you see a new worksheet has been created, and let's zoom in so we can get a better look. Let's also spread these columns out a bit so we can understand what we're looking at. Now there's a lot going on here. However, for this introductory course, it's important to only focus on two things. In particular, we're interested in the means. And here we see that variable one refers to the attack fatalities that involved a rifle, and variable two refers to the attack fatalities that did not involve a rifle. Now for this introductory course, we wanna take into consideration whether or not it was significant, and we're going to look at the p-value. As we know, 0 0.05 and below is going to be considered significant. And with this test, we see that both the one-tail and the two-tail test would be considered significant. In this instance, it would be significant at the 0 0.01 level, and in this instance, it would only be considered significant at the 0 0.05 level. So when we consider our hypothesis, we can suggest that when an incident involves a rifle, it's going to increase the mean number of fatalities. Let's try another example. Going back to our mass shooting data, let's consider a regression analysis. With regression, as noted, we need to have two interval ratio variables. So let's continue focusing on weapons, and let's take into consideration whether or not the number of weapons influences the number of attack fatalities. So for instance, we could say that our hypothesis is 
the more weapons that a perpetrator has on them during the attack, the more likely they're going to incur more fatalities. So first we'd want to go to our data analysis tool and we'd want to scroll to regression. We'd click OK. In this one, the input Y range and the input X range are going to be the separate columns. In other words, it's going to focus on attack fatalities as well as number of weapons. We do not need to divide this column in half as we would with the nominal variable. And instead, we're going to highlight each one of these variables. So let's start with attack fatalities. And we will scroll down, highlighting all of the cells. Here you see I1 all the way to I52. And clicking input X range, we're going to do the same, highlighting P1 all the way to P52. Now with these, I highlighted the labels. So we're going to want to check that label mark. And we're going to call this regression. And we're going to click OK. Let's zoom in again. Now you'll notice some E's here. And this is because the numbers are so high that it inputs an E to account for this. However, we can fix this by double clicking, choosing format cells, clicking the number option and making sure we have two decimal places chosen. Click OK. And now you see it's a lot easier to manage. Again, we see a lot of mathematical equations that may be confusing to the layman. However, at this introductory level, we're again just going to focus on whether or not it was significant. And the way that we can determine whether or not it was significant is by scrolling down to the p-value. And here we see that the number of weapons influences the number of fatalities at the 0 .001 level. It only lists two decimal points at this point, but since they're both zeros, we know that it goes to at least one. So this is a highly significant relationship, and we would suggest that the number of weapons significantly impacts the number of fatalities. This concludes our introduction to inferential statistics and data analysis in Excel.